of Ruth Wayne and her problems as a woman, as well as a nurse, a wife, and a mother. Today's episode in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. It's about 8 o'clock at night, almost the end of evening office hours at Dr. Carvel's. Mrs. Platt is here, Dr. Carvel. Oh, yes. Uh, come in, Mrs. Platt. Thank you. Sit down, please. Uh, I'd like you to stay, too, Ruth. Take notes. Certainly, Dr. Carvel. This is awfully nice of you, Dr. Carvel. I, I know that you don't see many patients these days and waiting so late oh, for me. Oh, nonsense. Why are you so nervous, Mrs. Platt? Because, Dr. Carvel, I haven't been able to think of anything, do anything, since I was here this afternoon. Please tell me the truth right now. Will an operation help Alan? Or is he just going to be deaf? Mrs. Platt, Dr. Bannister examined your boy, and so did I. You have my word for it that there's absolutely nothing organically wrong with his hearing. I asked you to come back tonight because I needed to ask you some questions. How long have you been married? Why, almost eight years. Yeah. What does your husband do? He's with a telephone company, a repair man. He was at one of the missile monitoring stations until about a year ago. Uh, you said this afternoon that you first started noticing something wrong with your son's hearing about a year ago, too. Uh, that was after your husband got back? Why, yes, a, a couple of months after. Uh, you're getting all this, Ruth? Yes, Dr. Carl. Just how have things been between you and your husband since he got back, Mrs. Platt? Why, what do you mean, Dr. Carvel? Well, has everything been going well, or have you been having more quarrels than usual? That's a kind of funny question. As a matter of fact, things haven't been going too well. When he came back, everything was fine for a while. And then we started this fighting. Dr. Carvel... You mean that that has something to do with Alan's hearing? The fact that my husband and I have been fighting? I told you that there was nothing organically wrong with him. If there's not, then we have to look somewhere else for the cause. How old is your boy? Seven? Well, that's pretty young. But he's still old enough to be aware of a lot of things. It must have been pretty hard on him when his father went away. Then, when his father came back, what happened? Instead of completing the family group, that return split the group apart because there was open conflict between you and your husband. You mean the fact that we were fighting all the time, that he knew it? You've heard of closing your mind to something, haven't you? Well, what your boy was doing was closing his ears. If he didn't hear what was going on, he could ignore it. Oh, Dr. Carver... What have I done to Alan? What have I... No, 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 none of that. Suppose you run along home and have a talk with your husband. And suppose the two of you come back and see me tomorrow night. Dr. Carver, I, I don't know what to say. Well, don't try and say it to me. Say it to your husband and to your boy. Good night. Good night, Dr. Carver. Mrs. Wayne. Good night. And God bless you, both of you. Why that look, Ruth? Hmm? Well, I was just thinking. There are times when it must be very satisfying to be a doctor. Times? <laughs> yes. Even an old one, running on two cylinders. But, Ruth, the job still has to be done. Education. Teaching them that diseases aren't just a matter of viruses. The importance of the way we live and think and of our attitude towards society and the importance of the home life, particularly on children. I know. That's what you were thinking about, too, weren't you? Yes. Her boy, just about the same age as Richard. Oh, Richard's all right, Ruth. He's a fine boy. Is he? How do we know what's happening inside him? Going on in his mind. We have no friction in our home, Dr. Carvel. No conflict between husband and wife. Because there is no husband. Oh, Ruth. I'm sorry. But when I see something like that, another child... 
I'll get it. Hello? Ruth? Oh, hello, Nettie. How are you? Oh, I'm okay, Ruth. I wasn't sure whether you'd still be at the office or not, but, uh, Ruth, have you seen Hope at all today? Oh, no, no, Nettie, I haven't. Why? I don't know. She wasn't home when I got back from work. There was no note or anything, and I, I was just a little worried. Well, I don't see why you should worry, Nettie. She's probably out visiting somewhere. Or... Well, look, Nettie, I'm going to be leaving here in just a few minutes. Would you like me to stop off at your place on my way home? Would you, Ruth? Gee, that would be swell. All right, Nettie, I'll see you in a little while. Nettie, too, eh? What do you mean, Dr. Carvel? What's the trouble now? Nothing serious. He was just a little worried because Hope wasn't home and he didn't know where she was. Oh. So how is that going these days, Nettie and Hope? Mm. All right, Dr. Carvel. Fine. At least I hope so. The story of Big Sister will continue after this message from our sponsor. Hello, Ruth. Come on in. Thank you. Any word from Hope yet? No, not yet. I've been phoning around all the places she might be. I suppose you think I'm kind of a dope to get so upset about this just because she isn't I home. Not at all, Nettie. I think it's perfectly natural. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even think about it. But everything's been so kind of strange since the other night. You know, when she told us about that money she inherited? Strange how? I don't know. She just didn't seem to want to talk about it. I didn't even know she had an uncle, much less one that could leave her $5,000. But, well, after all, it is her money. Hope. Oh, hello, Nettie. Hello, Ruth. How are you, Hope? Oh, I'm just swell. Well, where have you been, anyway? I was starting to get worried about you. Worried? Why? Coming home and not finding you here and not knowing where you were or anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Nettie. I suppose I should have called you, but... I left the house in such a hurry, and I've been so busy. Well, doing what? Well, mostly trying to fix up a surprise for you. A present. A present? What kind of a present? If you had your choice, what would you want most, Nettie? More than anything in the world. I don't know. Hope, nothing special. Oh, no? What about that garage over at Somerville? Garage? What about it? Well, it's yours, Nettie. It's all yours. Well, well it can't be. Well... How, Hope? Gee, isn't that just like a man, Ruth? You break your neck to get him something you know he wants, and then instead of even saying thank you, he starts asking you questions. Well, I think he's just a little surprised, Hope. I know I am. I thought the garage had been sold. I know it was sold. I spoke to Mr. Brooks myself, and he said it was. Well, so now it's been sold again. To us. You mean you bought the garage? Oh, sure. Gee, Nettie, why do you think I was so excited when I came over to Ruth the other night and told you about the money I'd inherited? Do you think I cared anything about the money for myself that it meant anything to me? The reason I was so excited was, well, because I knew I'd be able to do something for you with it and help you get somewhere in the world. And I have. Hope, I don't know what to say. I think it's wonderful, Hope. Really wonderful. Wonderful? I think it's the... M but what I don't get is how you were able to do it. I mean, all by yourself like that, finding out who bought it and getting them to sell. Well, I never said I did it all by myself, Nettie. I had help. Oh, you mean uh, a lawyer or something? No. Someone better than a lawyer. Frank Wayne. Frank? Mm-hmm. And you should just know the trouble he went to. On the phone all day, getting hold of the new owner, talking to him, arranging things. Well, that's where I was all this time. Down in his office while he got everything settled. Oh, gee, Hope, you shouldn't have done that, bothering him. Well, why not? You want the garage, don't you? Yes, I suppose so. Well, I said we dropped the whole thing when it was a matter of borrowing money from him. But then when I got this money of my own, well, who else was there I could turn to? I don't know. After all, he is a businessman. And, well, if you think that I did something wonderful, you certainly should be grateful to him. After all, I'm your wife, but... Well, you certainly haven't treated him very nicely, any of you. 
And still he was glad to help me. Help us. More than glad. Don't you think that was pretty nice, Ruth? Yes, Hope, I guess it was. I guess it was, too. I guess I really ought to thank him. First, a mysterious stroke of good fortune. The money Hope inherited. And now, Frank Wayne. Somehow, neither Ruth nor Nettie seems as happy about the purchase of the garage as they might be. And perhaps there's good reason for them to feel uneasy. Now, a message from our sponsor. Tomorrow on Big Sister.